Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. We are God's Church of Love online. This is our regular Saturday service at 1215 Pacific and 315 Eastern. God bless you as you hear the word. I hope it encourages you. Mark 5, starting at verse 1. And they came over onto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. Now we know where cutting comes from. It's a demonic thing. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshiped him. He cried with a loud voice and said, what am I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee of God, that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. Now I'm stopping there, because the point of it is what he did. The man ran to him and he worshiped him. Check that out. The man himself worshiped Jesus. The demons cried out, torment me not. But the man himself of his own will worshiped Jesus. He ran to him and worshiped. Remember that word, he worshiped. And he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not faint. There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded men. Uh -huh. And there was a widow in the city, and she came unto him saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterwards he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet, because this widow troubled me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Hmm. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Now, the thing I love about this story, Jesus uses one word in one of the other stories, importunity, persistence. It's like a continual dripping, relentless prayer, relentless. I will not let you go until you bless me relentless, determined relentlessness. All right, same chapter, 35 through the end. And it came to pass that as he was come nigh unto Jericho, a certain blind man sat by the wayside begging. And hearing the multitude pass by, he asked what it meant. And they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passed by. And he cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And they, <laughs> and they which went before rebuked him that he should hold his peace. Shh. But he cried so much the more. Mm. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. And when he was come near, he asked him, 
He asked him, check this out, like he didn't know. What wilt thou that I shall do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight. Thy faith have saved thee. And immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise unto God. Now, those two stories right there, the unjust judge who had no regard for man or God, the woman, the, the blind man that would not shut up when they wanted him to hold his peace. You ever notice how people are, they want to be politically correct. Look, when you want a miracle, that is not the time to be politically correct. I don't care who you offend. You're not doing anybody any wrong. You open your mouth wide, baby, and you go after what you want. That's what God respects. He respects relentless prayer. So we're looking at worship. We're looking at relentless persistence. That's the word, persistence. If the blind man had shut his mouth, how many of you have been in church? You got ready to do something where you thought you're going to get a prayer answered. And somebody said, what are you doing? Sit down. It's disturbing. And you sat your little hiney down. How many of us have lost out on a blessing, on a miracle, because we are trying to appease people? People get offended. That's their problem. Forget them. They're not the ones that have your problem. Now, are they? Are they? Uh-huh. Now, yeah, right. I can get big, bad, and bodacious when I'm fussing, but I'm not fussing to be mean. I'm fussing to let you know God is, is waiting with bated breath for you to come after what he has for you. There are times when his blessings require participation on our end. We want it. That's good. We pray for it. That's good. What you going to do about it? Hmm? Hmm? That blind man, he wanted to see. What if he had just said a little quiet prayer? Oh, Jesus, I hope if you hear me as you're going by that you give me back my eyesight. But guess what? No. I doubt if that would have gotten anything done. It was what he did with that faith. Those people, man, stop being so... You, you're too loud. You're being rowdy. You're, you're disturbing the peace. Just let him go by. He ain't got time to be worried about you. Leave him alone. Man, busy. He's blessing folks. Leave him alone. Go on back to begging. Hmm, really? No, I don't think so. As, as the Alabaster song goes, you were there. You don't know what I've been through. No. I'm going to cry out, baby. You be quiet. You want quiet? You shut your mouth. But I'm going to open my mouth. Why? Jesus of Nazareth, have mercy on me. That's right. You get God's attention. You get his attention. Don't worry about folks laughing at you, criticizing you, having all kind of stuff to say about, you know, how come? How come you got to be so loud? How come you got to be so rowdy? Oh, no, 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 no. It ain't none of their business. Your blessing is for you. What God has for you is for you. But you must go after it. And don't don't give a, a flying you-know-what about what people think about how you're acting to get it. What about the woman with the issue of blood? Hmm? She wasn't polite, was she? She wasn't, oh, would you please step aside so I can get a little close of you? Okay, this is good. I don't want to bother anybody. You better get to bothering. What did she do? She got on her hands and knees and she forced her way past those legs and the robes and the crowd. And she clawed her way through the, the crowd. She was not ladylike. She was not distinguished. She was not poised. She was not dainty. She pushed her way through that crowd and got her blessing. 
All she could do was get the hem of his garment. That was good enough for her. Her faith was that strong that it forced her through that crowd and got her to her savior. And her issue of blood dried up instantly because the virtue, healing virtue, left Jesus' body. Because what she did, her determination, her persistence, drew his healing virtue from his body without him being a participant. She was the soul person making that happen. Jesus said, thy faith has healed you, not my action, thy faith. And I ask you, where is your faith? Where is your faith? It doesn't need to be on the back burner, you guys. See, a lot of times we think that it's okay to be politically correct. We think it's okay to just uh, be okay. Now, do you remember the story of the man where uh, he was a paralytic? I guess he couldn't move or whatever. That's what I would assume. That he was on a bed and his two friends, thank God for godly friends. Mm -hmm. His two friends. Now, it may have been that he may not have been determined, but the friends were. And they picked his little bed up and walked him over to where Jesus was. And there was so much of a crowd, so many people. It was impossible for them to push their way through that crowd. They wouldn't even make way for that poor man. So what did they do? They said there's more than one way to skin this cat. And their determination made them climb up on a roof of a house, pick that roof apart, create a, an opening so they could lower him down right in front of Jesus. Like, you ain't going to miss this one. We're going to put him right, in, right up under your nose. You got to pray for him. Hmm? That's persistence. That's not politically correct. I can imagine the person whose house that was, wasn't all that happy about them taking it apart. Hopefully they put it back together when the whole thing was said and done. But the bottom line is they did what they had to do to get their blessing. They weren't thinking about being polite, considerate. They weren't thinking about, there are times, you know, the Bible says the, the kingdom, the kingdom of God suffers violence. Suffer means allows. The kingdom of God allows violence. And the violent take it by force. Give me that. That's mine. Give it to me, I said. That's mine. Your healing is your healing. Your blessing is your blessing. Your miracle is your miracle. Are you looking for a miracle? Or are you looking for the crumbs? See, I'm not a crumb person. I'll eat some crumbs, but I'm not a crumb person. I want what I want. Now, I know there are times when God will say no. That's my answer to my prayer. No does not mean he doesn't love me. No means I can't afford to have that right now. I'm not ready. He's sovereign. He's a God of purpose. But that doesn't mean that he's impotent, that he can't handle your little prayer request. There's nothing you can ask him that he can't do. Nothing. Nothing. But my point to you is, if you want it bad enough, what are you willing to do to go out and get it? What are you willing to do? You remember the man with leprosy? Mm -hmm. He was indignant because God told him to go out to the river and dip seven times to get rid of that leprosy. This was a distinguished man. What, what got him ticked off was that he's looking for Isaiah 
to come, whoever the prophet was, to come to his door and lay hands on him and raise him up. Boy, he could have his miracle in the comfort of his home. But guess what was required of him? He had to humble his little dignified self. Yes, he did. And he did not like it. But he wanted to be healed so bad that he dipped himself in that nasty river where you don't know what was swarming around in there. That wasn't the high class location. No, he had to go to that river to dip. And he was mad. He was hot because the prophet had the nerve not to even come out and acknowledge him. He sent his servant with the message. Uh, the prophet said you got to dip seven times over there. I'm like, well, wait a minute. I'm, do you know who I am? But guess what? In spite of that, in spite of who he was, he took his little happy, proud hips over to that little nasty river and dipped seven times. Are you willing to humble yourself for your blessing? Are you willing to humiliate yourself for your miracle? Huh? Are you willing to obey at all costs for the, in spite of your image for the sake of your miracle? Hmm. Think about it. Think about that. Hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a song that says, oh boy. I'm just gonna do it real quick, a little small snippet of it. So don't don't shut me off, you know, if you ain't crazy about the boys, get the words. Um, all I had to give was a broken heart, torn apart. All I had to give was emptiness, broken promises. But in return, you gave me joy that could never be told. In return, you gave me love that was more precious than gold. So whatever you have to give, the Lord has so much more. So what do you have to give? Now, some of you have to give up your pride to get your miracle. Some of you have to lay aside your name and reputation to get your miracle. Some of you have to lose a battle with a heart full of forgiveness and grace in order to get your miracle. Some of you have to shut up and give up the fight completely and walk away with a white flag of retreat, totally disengaging from the fight totally giving it up, letting it go, trusting God in order to get your miracle. You got to have that kind of determination where you're willing to let everything go to get your miracle, including your rights. Ooh, my goodness, my goodness. <laughs> When you look at, at John at, at uh, Patmos, uh, uh, anyway, I can't think of that. Um, the Isle of Patmos, thank you, Lord. Where he was doing time. Mm -hmm. And his crime was G-O-D. Now, had he not submitted to doing that time, we would not have the book of Revelations, now would we? He would never have had that experience all those visions and encounters and all of that, that assignment to write that particular book. Check that out. All he was was a scribe. God played the scene in front of him and he had to write it out. And we're still reading it and being blessed by it today. Totally prophetic. Uh-huh. There are times for you to get your miracle. Your miracle doesn't even look like a miracle. Mm. 
Mm, thank you, Lord. Now, one thing, okay, let me, let, let me put it like this, okay. Sometimes life will bring disgusting situations that you don't like. They're not comfortable. They're downright humiliating. You, you, you're not enjoying it. They're painful at times, all right. But there are times when God's miracles come through some dirty channels to get to you. <laughs> Remember, help me not lose my train of thought, Lord. Remember the other blind man that Jesus was going to heal? I'd rather be the one that said, Lord, Lord, have mercy on me. And he tried to shut him up and he was determined. But what about the other blind man? The other blind man wanted a miracle of, of his eyesight back, right? Mm -hmm. What did Jesus do? This is nasty to me. I'm sorry. Even though it's Jesus, still nasty to me. He spit on the dirt. Made mud out of it. Mud and spit. Yeah! Sorry, Lord. Yeah! Right? And he smeared it on the man's eyelids. Ugh, I don't want that on my face. It's nasty. <laughs> but that's how he got his eyesight. Some of you are looking for a miracle. But unless you're willing to take it the way God's going to dish it out to you, you won't get to enjoy it. There are times when your miracle will come with tears. There are times when hard times, difficulties, trials, tribulations, frustrations, betrayals, backstabbing, lies will bring about your miracle. Now that blind man sat there and let him do that to him. But there are many born again Christians that will not allow God to take them through the fiery furnace to get to their miracle. When you look at Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, and they would not bow. And they put him in the fiery furnace. If we die, we die. That was their attitude. What's your attitude? But they got to experience a miracle. Because when they got into that fiery furnace, instead of three of them, there were four. That included Jesus. And when they turn that thing up seven times hotter, they didn't even have the smell of smoke on them. They weren't burnt. They weren't destroyed. They weren't hurt. They weren't killed, were they? That was a miracle. But what a risk to take to even know if you're going to have a miracle happen in your life or not. Many did not experience miracles. Many died. But who knows what they experienced while they were dying. Could have been a pain-free departure. They could have seen angels. You don't know what they experienced. But my question to you is, how bad do you want that miracle? What price are you willing to pay? What are you willing for God to take you through? Some through the fire. Some through the flood. So, I mean, oh my goodness, some through great trial, but all through the blood. Ooh. <laughs> some of your miracles will be painstaking, just like giving labor, having labor before giving birth to your beautiful bouncing baby boy or bouncing baby girl. But you got to go through the pain to get the gain. What's his face dipping in that nasty water seven times? 
the prophet being fed, having his food brought to him miraculously every single day by a raven. Ravens are nasty birds. They're nasty. Unclean. Yeah. But that's what God chose to feed that prophet with every single day. You cannot be picky. When you ask God for something, when you're looking for your miracle, you got to be willing to take it any way it comes. Like the woman, it's a story I heard, who had a house full of kids. Husband was dead, as far as I know. <laughs> and she set the table, had all the kids set the table. Their cupboards were bare. Their fridge was bare. And the kids are like, well, what are you having? To, we don't have anything to eat, mama. She says, set the table. God will provide a way. Hmm. Now, she could have sat there and looked like a fool all night long while the kids were holding their bellies. And she was feeling the hunger herself. She was willing to look like a fool. But there came a knock on her door. And who was at her door? Was it the governor? No. Was it the mayor? No. Was it Salvation Army delivering food? No. It was that old town drunk that's always sitting on the ground, half drunk out of his mind all the time. The town drunk. Talking about, well, I got some groceries for you because God told me to buy you some groceries. Household full of food. Did it come through a dignified source? No. Did she receive it? Yes. She got her miracle. Oh, yeah. See, you got to have faith. You got to be persistent. Relentless persistence, that's what I call it. You got to be willing to look like a fool if that's what it takes for you to get your miracle. You got to really, 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 really want it. How bad do you want your miracle? Hmm? What are you willing to do for God to get your miracle? What are you willing to give to God for your miracle? I ain't talking about money. I'm talking about giving your heartache, your pain, your time. Giving up your reputation, giving up your name, giving up your house, like my husband and I had to do. Giving up the fight, like some of you have to do in court cases that you might win, but God says, let it go. And I got something better for you. Do you trust me? Mm. You have no idea what channel God's going to bring your blessing through. You have no idea what channel God's going to bring your miracle through. You have no idea. And you can't tell him how to do it. He'll use who he chooses, what he chooses, when he chooses, how he chooses. Just know that he is a miracle working God. Help me, Lord. Help me, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Almost forgot that. Another thing you must be in your prayers for a miracle is write this word down because many of you missed this one. S-P-E-C-I-F-I-C. -I -I you must be specific. 
Tell it like it is. Don't beat around the bush. Don't pussyfoot. Don't tiptoe around the tulips. Mm -mm. Don't hint. Don't insinuate. Don't pray little general prayers. Well, Lord, you know what I need. I mean, you know what I need. Please bless me, Lord. Thank you. Thank you in advance. Here's my unspoken request. Blah, blah, blah. I said some of that on the other video. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Specific. When my husband and I were in that pit, in that fiery trial, going through it, baby, my prayer was, if you ever have anything for us, this is what I love. Trees. Quiet. We'd like to hear the birds tweeting. We'd love to have a hot tub, a swimming pool. I'd love to have a pool table. Hello. I'd love to not have to fight traffic anymore. I would love to live in a place that's well-maintained with a very low crime rate. Yeah. We had to go through foreclosure hell to get to this heavenly haven. Hmm. This is my miracle. I live now, now that uh, they finally gave social security folks a little bit of a raise, I finally made it to the 900s. I make $900 a month on the dot. And I own a house, y'all, think about it. I own a house. Most everybody I know that makes the average income that I make can't afford to get their own apartment unless they get a little hole in the wall or they've been on a waiting list for years and years to get a little pocket of an apartment that's a senior place. Might be 600 square feet, if that much. The Lord challenged me not to be on, on food stamps. Challenged me said, you take care of my kingdom, I'll take care of your business. So now, no food stamps. Between house, I'm, I'm telling you how God works. Between house, insurance, mortgage insurance, HOA, property taxes, right? I'm forking out almost eight, uh, excuse me, almost $700 a month for that. Mortgage is only three twenty one, but with all that packed on it, it's it's seven hundred, ten dollars shy of seven hundred. But here's the blessing, y'all. Here's the blessing. I'm taking care of him. I'm not taking care of him. I'm doing what he told me to do, and he's blessing me. I've never had to wait. All of my utilities are paid. If I get, I, I don't have to worry about getting hungry. I buy staples. I buy oatmeal. I buy soups. I know how to shop cheap, y'all. I can make it off of $75 a month if I have to. I know how to do it. I know how to wing some food around and spread it around so it goes far. Nothing like a little bit of wheat tina and cream of wheat to add to the soup to give it some bulk and get your nutritions and all of that. And, and I mean, there's a whole lot of little tricks to spreading your food. But I'm telling you, I'm not going hungry at all. I'm not. God has taken good care of me. My whole life is a miracle. Everybody I know that makes what I make and a little more, a little less. They're living with somebody else. Somebody else. When you go through your trials, you go through it holding God's hand, not blaming God. You hold his hand and you ask him every step of the way. And why are you going through and you're asking him what to do to lead you, to make a way for you, to go ahead of you, make the crooked places straight and the rough places smooth and all of that, you make sure you praise him and let him know that you know who's on your side and who's for you. In spite of what's going on, you keep trusting him. And while you're trusting him, you get real specific. 
This whole community is filled with trees. There's my greenery. The clubhouse has a swimming pool. There's my swimming pool. The clubhouse has a hot tub. There's Milton's hot tub. It has a pool table. There's my pool table. Everything I wanted. I wanted to feel like I lived in the country with, on, with only a five-minute drive to get to all the stores I need to get to. It's only a 10 or 12 or maybe 13-minute walk to get to the grocery store. It's a two-minute drive to get there. Everything I need is right around, just outside of this community. And we don't hear traffic. Traffic is two miles up the road on the main drag. All this is all community, nice and quiet, peaceful. Check out the video I did last night. When God works a miracle for you, you have to be receptive. When God allowed me to have to go to the hospital to spend 12 days in ICU, there was a woman in the bed next to my space. She was an emergency. I was an emergency. She fussed. She cussed. She complained, she bickered, she yelled, she screamed, she had temper tantrums, she insulted, she cursed the people. I mean, everything was nasty and negative, right? Of course, I took authority and I started binding them demons and commanding them to leave that place and take her with them. And within about 30 minutes, that woman got her little unhappy hips up and walked out and said, I'm out of here. Screw y'all. I'm saying it nicely. Now, she was gone. Well, I stayed there and I blessed God and I thanked God and I trusted God because I knew God had to take me through that nasty season to get me to my miracle of healing. Yes! Miracles don't always come pretty but they come. Where is your faith? In your miracle or in your problem? In God's blessings or in your challenges? <laughs> Life sucks and then you die. No, baby cakes. How are you going to handle what you're going through? The glass is either half full or half empty. What is it for you? Hmm. Better ask God for a different outlook on life because that makes a big difference on how you get through that stuff. I'm looking for a miracle. I'm expecting the impossible. I'm looking for a miracle. I'm expecting the impossible. <laughs> the sky is the limit for what I can see, be, receive. God is the miracle working power in me. I made that part up. But anyway, listen, you guys. What are you looking for? You got to get through the mud. <laughs> To get to that big diamond across the street. Go through the mud. Get your feet wet and messy. You'll get over it. Ain't no big deal. Ain't the end of the world. Get that diamond. You want it? Go get it. Hello? You want it? You want that miracle? Go after it with all you got, baby. Heart, mind, body, soul, spirit, money, whatever. Go after it. Just make sure it's God's will for you. Don't go after your way and be determined to have it your way. Let me read a warning to you. Got to read this to you. And then we'll be done. Says, okay, verse 8. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Oh yeah, he will. 
But be ye not as the horse or as a mule, which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle, lest they come near unto thee. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall compass him about. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. Don't be stubborn. Don't be like, okay, I tell you what, Lord, you ain't answering my prayer like I want you to answer it. I answer my own doggone prayer. I know what I'm going to do. Screw that. Mm -mm. No, no, no. I'm going to do it. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh, uh -uh. Don't be no fool. If God makes you wait five years for your miracle, you better wait with a smile on your face. And when you can't smile, cry, but cry out to him. Don't blame him. Don't fuss. You can bring your complaints to God, but don't complain about God. It's a difference. Don't bite the hand that feeds you now. All right. I hope that says something for you. I think I've missed a few things, and I, I hate to do that, but I, I got to stop. It's, time is running out, and Lord, unless you give me something else to say, I think I'm done. Here we go. Blessed is the man. This is Psalms chapter 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Mm, mm, mm. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. I was just led to read that, so I guess that's my closing scripture. God bless you. I hope you're encouraged. Whatever you do, when you want your miracle, go after it. Be persistent. Believe, praise God, worship, be persistent, and believe. You've got to do that. And you have to be willing and open to receive your miracle, no matter what vehicle it comes through, even if, if, even if it comes through an unlikely, unpleasant, unclean source. Receive your miracle. I got my miracle by way of ICU. I got my miracle by way of foreclosure. Do you hear what I'm saying? Ah. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> God bless you. And I really hope that helps. <laughs>